How does one find a chapter of Space Marines who don't wish to be found? This is the question and task that I've been given. I know this journey won't be an easy one, but it's one I have to see through till the end. My name is Sarvis Vash, acolyte of the Ordo Astartes, and from this point forward, I'll be keeping a log of my findings to chronicle this misadventure, for I suspect my answer will be a strange one. I've been asked to find the elusive Doomslayers of Ares. To summarize the findings about this chapter, the Doomslayers, as named by the guardsmen they fought beside on Ares, is a chapter without a name. They are an enigma with no formal records, yet there are recorded interactions with them. To put it bluntly, the chapter is aloof. Time and time again, the Imperium has reached out to the Doomslayers to fight our enemies only to be ignored. With that said, there is a particular pattern which has prevented the chapter from being actively hunted. They don't fight Xenos, nor do they fight mutants or even traitors. When the Imperium has these foes to fight, their calls to arms are ignored. However, when the forces of chaos are the foe, the Doomslayers respond with rapid efficiency. It's been reported that when the Doomslayers combat chaos, they fight with a hatred, an anger, that is comparable to one particular chapter. With that said, if that chapter's anger is a white-hot burning rage, then the anger of the Doomslayers is the quiet and cold hatred that, though subdued, is just as dangerous. On the off chance that this chapter was a forgotten Ordo, or extension of the Inquisition, I combed through our records only to find nothing. Whatever this chapter is, they aren't a part of the Inquisition or Ecclesiarchy. There is no record or even idea on when this chapter was formed. What's concerning is there may be a hint, the chapter's equipment. Though they wear and brandish a fair amount of modern equipment, they seem to also use heavily modified gear from the 31st millennium. What's concerning is how old they might be given that implication. To think a chapter could be lost that long is disheartening, at least to me. To be separated from one's family is a terrible thing indeed. Following that thought, there is once again no record on who the Primarch of this chapter is. However, once again, there are some hints. Considering the rather friendly nature of this chapter, which has become apparent through interviews with guardsmen and the like, as well as the chapter's talent for modifying weapons, I suspect they may be a successor of the Salamanders. With that said, there is another option, the Dark Angels. One of the major reasons we suspect this comes down to the actions of the Doomslayers and Dark Angels. Periodically, most likely when the Doomslayers aren't engaged in battle, they make a journey to what remains of Caliban on the anniversary of the planet's destruction and the disappearance of Lion L. Johnson. For several days, they sit upon a few of the numerous asteroids and that's it. It's a rather strange sight to behold, but the Dark Angels, nor any of their successor chapters, interfere. Both parties may not interact with one another, but there seems to be a genuine respect if nothing else. Pair this off with the Doomslayer's penchant for being secretive, and I could form a compelling argument. But, there is a flaw in that line of thinking, which is the lack of self-loathing the chapter has for itself. A trait that seems to persist within the Dark Angels. What's frustrating is the lack of information their armor scheme gives. They wear the same green that both the Dark Angels and Salamanders wear. As noted previously, the Doomslayer's hatred for chaos is immeasurable. At first glance, one could easily dismiss the chapter as a single-minded hammer built and used for one purpose. However, such a glance will result in the finer aspects of the chapter being missed. As stated earlier, on the planet of Ares, an Imperial Guard Regiment once fought alongside the Doomslayers. In truth, much of our information comes from this interaction. The Regiment informed us that despite not saying a word, more on this later, the Doomslayers had a connection to not just each other, but to the Guardsmen on the field. Space Marine Brotherhood is a well-known fact about almost every chapter, However, it appears that sense of brotherhood in the Doomslayers has extended to other sects of the Imperium. True, our information comes from only one Imperial Guard Regiment, but everyone we questioned shared similar stories. More than a few of the Doomslayers laid down their lives to protect Guardsmen during their Battle of Chaos. Beyond this, interactions outside of battle were, as one Guardsman put it, heartwarming. 
Whenever the Marines ate, they shared what they had with the Guardsmen. During downtime, they played cards as well as joined in on standard affairs that common soldiers do in times of rest. And when the Guardsmen slept, the Doomslayers kept watch, like silent, and I quote here, Big Brothers. With that said, the chapter leaves as fast as it appears. They aren't like the White Scars. They don't have a specialized combat doctrine or even specialized equipment. Their speed in combat appears to come from, not their equipment, but their ferocity in battle. Only one other chapter fights as enraged as this one does. But, unlike that chapter, they prefer to fight their opponents with ranged weapons. Though, it's often applied in close quarters. One strange thing about the chapter did emerge during the interviews. That being the chapter's mutation. They're mute. All of them. As noted with the interactions with the Imperial Guard, the Doomslayers don't and never do speak. However, in battle, and just general interactions between Battle Brothers, the Doomslayers sign to one another in a language only they truly understand. Despite the fact that they were all mute, the Guardsman Commander informed us that it was fairly easy to interact with them. They can still write, after all. I'll have a further report about the Battle of Ares, but it should be noted that the Doomslayers seem to be incredibly willing to help and coordinate with other branches of the Imperium so long as they are engaged with Chaos. Whatever the reason for this chapter's secretiveness, I suspect it's related to Chaos, but I can't say this for sure. A pattern of behavior has emerged, which seems to be in conflict with the chapter's openly forward and friendly demeanor. As of now, I don't think they are a threat, but something is going on. There's something that doesn't quite add up. Before signing off, there's some general information which I want to go over, to keep and record just in case something would happen to me. The Doomslayers use a wide assortment of equipment for the Adeptus Astartes dating back to the Horus Heresy. However, their ancient equipment seems to have been modified to modern specifications. I've said this before, but I want to emphasize how strange it is that they have such old equipment, and how strange it is that they've been able to upgrade it, or even that they decided to upgrade it in the first place. Most melee weapons outside of knives and chain swords aren't anywhere to be seen, but by the Emperor, do they appear to love their guns. The Doomslayers have one piece of custom equipment that is... something to behold. After seeing one that was left behind on Ares, I can attest it is truly... Well, it's truly something. It's a double-barreled, breech-loading, I'm hesitant to say rifle, that fires what is essentially artillery shells. It seems to be a favorite weapon among the chapter, and is devastating up close. This group is perplexing and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to investigate further. With that said, something just doesn't add up. It could just be me, but their behavior seems to contradict itself in places. This might make more sense if I knew who their Primarch was, to compare them to other chapters and see if this is a pattern of behavior, but I can't. As it stands, I don't believe they are enemies of the Imperium, or acting on their own desires, but something is going on here. Perhaps, the Battle of Ares holds more information to this mystery. I'll elaborate further in my next log. Acolyte, Service Vash of the Ordo Astartes, signing off.